Hey folks, my name is Rob, and today I'm going to be walking you through the basic workflow for the Formlabs Fuse 1 SLS 3D printer. If you're updating your makerspace, outfitting a machine shop, or just want to keep up with the latest in additive manufacturing, stick around while we get into the weeds on this exciting new product. First things first, let's load up Preform. This slicing software is free to download, even if you don't have a Formlabs printer. Like most slicers, it provides estimates for print time and material consumption, and it's a great tool for familiarizing yourself with the process. I'd highly recommend downloading this program and following along with your own files. Once you have Preform loaded, select the printer in the upper right and then import your 3D model. We're going to be using this sample part designed by Formlabs to benchmark and showcase some of the Fuse One's capabilities. For those of you who have more experience with FDM or SLA-based machines, you know that orientation is critical for a successful build, and SLS is no exception. Although some of the process is simplified by the lack of support structures, there are a few geometries you should try to avoid. Specifically, you should try to tilt flat surfaces so that large sections aren't printed without a part from a previous layer to anchor them. I'm going to tilt this enough so that there's also not any noticeable stepping of layers. Let's duplicate this model a few times to simulate a short run production build. A big departure from FDM and similar systems, and a major benefit of SLS 3D printing, is the ability to easily pack your build volume with parts in the Z direction as well as X and Y. This can save time and resources when you need to create many copies of the same part. Okay, we're ready to roll. Let's send this job to the printer and get to the fun part. Standard maintenance procedures. Jokes aside, this is another feature that really sets Formlabs apart from the other printers in the SLS space. The fuse will always require a few checks to ensure that even beginners are able to operate this technology safely and efficiently. You can check them out on this screen as it guides you. So real quick, let's make sure our build chamber is in place, our IR sensor and optical window are clear, and we have enough powder to complete the build. Running the printer will bring our build chamber up to 180 degrees Celsius before beginning the sintering process. Unlike SLA, SLS is a physical, not chemical reaction. The nylon powder is brought right up to its melting point with heating elements in the build chamber before the laser pushes it over and selectively sinters the powder layer by layer. Once one layer is complete, a doser spreads a new layer of powder on top of the volume and the process repeats. Once the build is complete, the printer will then enter a cool-down cycle to bring the parts down to room temperature slowly to avoid thermal shock. Typically, the cool-down process is about 30 to 50 percent of the total print time, and this isn't included in the preform estimate. That said, you can monitor the progress of your jobs using Formlabs built-in dashboard. Okay, the post-processing step is a bit more complicated when compared with other printing technologies, but has been simplified by Formlabs streamlined industrial design. That said, it's still important to make sure that you take steps to protect yourself and others by wearing PPE and being careful when handling your parts. This powder can get all over the place if you're moving too fast. After we load the build into the sift, we're going to break down the volume over the holes to reclaim uncentered nylon powder. These parts are going to be very powdery and will need some kind of mechanical agitation or ideally a bead blaster to give them a nicer surface finish. For now, I'm just gonna set these parts aside and use the built-in vacuum to get our work area nice and clean. Let's get that sifted powder back in the printer via the powder cartridge. This is another area where Formlabs shines when compared to other players in the space. The Fuse 1 supports a 30% refresh rate, which means that 70% of the powder that fills the chamber can be recycled from previous builds. Now, it's time for the spin cycle. Pour the remixed powder back into the Fuse 1 and you're ready to start your next print. Let's take a look at the final parts. As you can see, although the surface quality is a little more porous than SLA, the detail is phenomenal. It's not all looks either. Nylon 12 is a highly versatile material with applications in a wide range of industries. FDM and SLA can only get you so far. If you're ready to elevate your additive program, check out SLS 3D printing with the Formlabs Fuse 1 3D printer. Okay, I hope this video has been helpful. If you're here because you're in the market and just wanted to get a better idea of the technology, please check out the link in the description or come on over to dynamism.com. Uh, we got offices in Chicago and Denver and would love to help get this technology uh, in, in your hands. This is Rob Schick from Dynamism signing off.